بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته How's everybody doing? الحمد لله So last week we covered the first ayah بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل للمطففين uh, woe or destruction upon or you know the worst of calamities to what those who are skimmers or people who uh, you could say uh, do you know um, skimming off the top or short changing and it seems as if um, subhanallah somebody might look at this and see that there's such a terrible punishment for the one who is scamming what about the thief right because a scam right is just like you're making a sale and then you're just taking a few extra dollars let's say and the guy doesn't notice or you're just short changing him just a little bit right and the person might not notice. But the question is, well, then what about the thief? Uh, shouldn't he deserve such a bigger uh, you know, uh, threat? And the answer is, well, yes, obviously, the one who steals something outright is obviously going to get a terrible punishment and it's something that's very clearly considered a major sin. That being said, though, it could be, it could be possible that perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving such a huge threat for scamming and skimming and so forth because blatant theft will be punished pretty quickly. In the sense that society can't go on if everybody's taking wholesale, gigantic, you know, possessions from everybody else. I mean, it might happen once or twice, but the fact of the matter is, eventually human beings are going to have to organize themselves in such a way where they're going to have to clamp down and say, listen, we can't, we can't keep this up. You know, I had this property and somebody stuck, uh, stole this, took that, this, that, and the other. And they're going to say, enough is enough. We have to just stop this. And, but the difference is that when it comes to shortchanging, it can be overlooked. And because it can be overlooked, it can become normalized. It's something that you can sort of get acclimated to, slowly but surely. And this is what really destroys a society. Of course, I'm not saying that theft is good, obviously. It's obviously a major sin. But the point is that societies can't function if theft is just legal. They're going to have to organize themselves and change themselves because obviously if I could take what you have, then you're going to come back and take it from me and he's going to take it from me. Eventually we're going to pull out our guns and everyone, it's, going to turn, it's going to turn into a mess really fast. So somebody's going to have to get involved and say, no, this can't go on. But can I shortchange you? Yeah but he can shortchange me, and so on and so forth. And it can all get overlooked. And it goes back to that analogy of the frog in water. I'm sure we've all heard it before. If you take a frog, put it in hot water, what happens? The frog jumps out. Why? Because the sudden change in temperature, it feels it, it jumps out. However, if you take that same frog, put it in some water that is, let's say, cooler, that he's more acclimated to, and then slowly heat it up. Slowly but surely just heat it up, what happens? They say that the frog won't notice it, and it'll uh, eventually boil it, be, become boiled and die. And so the whole idea is that evil, when it is slow in gravity, gradual, what happens is it becomes more uh, palatable and therefore human beings, unfortunately, it, it causes worse destruction. And Allah alam, that seems to be the case, that seems to be a reasonable uh, hypothesis and Allah knows best. The next ayah Allah Ta'ala says, Alladheena idha ktalu ala nasi yastawfoon. Now, the word mutafifin already explained the, cl- the crime, it described the crime of skimming off the top, shortchanging, however you want to say it. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes these next few ayat to do what? To spell it out more. One reason might be because the crime is subtle. And therefore, a subtle crime needs to be dissected under the microscope. The whole idea is that you're taking something subtle. No, no, let's dissect it. So you can even see the psychology of this, that when people skim in a small way, no, no, no. Pay attention, focus, what happened here. So Allah Ta'ala goes into detail. Going into more detail. And also, there may be many examples of tatfif. We talked about that last week. About tatfif can be done in many different ways. You could even be somebody who short changes in your salah if you, if you go quickly and so on and so forth. Uh, if you're not paying attention, and, and, and many different examples we gave. However, that being said, it seems that Allah Ta'ala is highlighting and specifying one that is going to resonate with us a lot, that we're going to understand very clearly, one that is probably very prevalent in society. So Allah Ta'ala is giving one example to sort of really clarify this issue. Now, the verb iktala means to measure, and it usually comes with the next, the, the harf that comes with it is min. Iktala min. So it means that he, he gave measure from, he took measure from a certain uh, person, minhu, let's say, from him. However, it's ala here. Alladheena uh, idhaktalu uh, ala, not min, min al nas. It's ala al nas. Why is the ala used? Because ala implies what against. I am, I am uh, taking measure against people in full. Now, what is that referring to? So, this individual, he will shortchange others, but when it's his turn to go to the store, not only will he make sure that he's getting it in full, but he's going to bully his way into getting getting in full. I'm sure we've all uh, uh, seen people who, I'd like to speak to your manager. You know what? I want a discount. This has a little scratch on it, and if I'm going to get this, then I want to get something extra with it. What are you going to offer me as a discount? Da, da, da. I'm sure we've all seen these type of people taking the lineup, you know, making things long and frustrating, and everybody's like, man, just get over it, man. It's like 25 cents. But they, they, you know, some people are like this. They want everything in absolute full. And so, yes, uh, 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 these, are, these type of people are very well known, 
and they want, they want to get what they deserve and even a little bit more than what they, they deserve. I want to get everything or everything that I perceive that I deserve. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam bis-sawab. Another possibility is that the ala is, uh, is uh, uh, ala nas I should say, is mutaqaddimah. It's, it's been uh, advanced. So the sentence would be, or the expected sentence would be, alladhina idha ktalu yastawfuna ala nas But the ala nas yastawfun has been advanced. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam bis-sawab. That could be why the ala is there. Allah knows best. Anyway, also iktala, the verb itself, yarhamukallah. The verb iktala uh, means to be weighed for, as opposed to kala yakilu, which means to, to weigh to weigh for somebody else. So this is describing the two circumstances. One time I'm buying from you, and another time I'm selling to you. So Allah Ta'ala is talking about both angles. Um, and what is being measured, what is being measured isn't mentioned, it's just considered a makil, a measurement of some kind of good, whether it be, you know, dates or fruits or whatever the case is. Um, so yes, there are many, many different ayat in the Qur'an, which goes to show how big and prevalent of an issue this is, that there are many different ayat in the Qur'an that talk about being fair and just in the way you measure and balance things. Uh, Allah Ta'ala says uh, wal mizan bil qist, that, And give full measure and weigh in justice Allah says kayla, idha kiltum, wazinu bil must, wa And give full measure when you measure And weigh with an even balance That is the best way And uh, uh, gives the best results Allah Ta'ala says Allah Ta'ala talks about how he gave balance to this whole world How everything has been created so delicately and precisely And then says what? Allah mizan, So that you do not transgress within the the balance. In other words, I'm keeping you people balanced in the way you're designed, in the way this planet works, in the way the rain gets, the water gets evaporated and rains down upon you and grows these beautiful crops. Do you notice how, subhanAllah, everything's balanced in your existence? Uh, and so Allah Ta'ala is saying, there, why? To teach you a lesson. You stay balanced as well and be fair. Uh, that Allah says, and establish weight in justice and do not make uh, deficient the balance. Then Allah Ta'ala says what? However, on the flip side, so when they are getting buying something, I want to talk to your manager, I want the best of the best, I always want things in full, and sometimes even more than full. But then when it's their turn, or if they give uh, by measure or by weight uh, to others, to uh, uh, that they cause loss. In other words, they are skimming. So yes, the last verse was about uh, the mutaffif being a customer, now they are the seller. Now the interesting he thing here is, again, the language, you have to pay close attention to it. So the last one was interesting was the ala. The ala was implying what? That they were kind of bullying. Now here you, you have kalu, you would expect kalu lahum. That's the normal usage of the verb. You'd expect kalu lahum and wazanu lahum. But without the harf jar of the lam, it's as something else is being said here. It's as if something is missing. Why? Because that's exactly the point. When they do something, there's always something missing. So that's one implication. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Allah ta'ala, you could say, is almost painting a picture here that removing the harf jar, why? To let you know, hey, something was missing. That's, that seems odd. And that's exactly the point. A second reason that I think is, wallahu ta'ala a'lam, quite interesting and quite possible is what? The expected sentence is kalu hum, kalu lahum, but Allah ta'ala removes the lam and just says kalu hum. Why? Because it, perhaps the lamb is missing as if Allah is saying the crooked seller isn't just measuring the weight and measuring and weighing the product, he's also uh, measuring up, sizing up and weighing the customer. Kaluhum, I'm figuring you out. I'm sizing you up. I'm checking to see if you're paying close attention, if you are the shrewd type of individual, if you're a discerning individual, or if you're a person in ghafla, heedless, not really paying much attention. So, kaluhum literally means that he is sizing, you know, he's weighing them, he's sizing them up, he's measuring them. So as the guy's supposed to be doing his measurements to see, you know, okay, this much gold for this much, you know, fruit or whatever the case is, he's supposed to be weighing this person, but this <laughs> measurement, he's actually weighing the guy saying, is this guy paying attention or not? And the whole idea is what? If the seller considers the person a sucker, essentially, he's going to say, I'm going to scam him as hard as possible. But if the person is shrewd and discerning, he'll cheat him very little or maybe not even at all. So yes. Uh, the fact that these two qualities are mentioned successively implies that this person will, be, will do these things back to back, which shows that this person is ignoring their blatant hypocrisy. Imagine one minute you go to the store and you make a big deal and make everybody stop and stare at you. Why? Because you're screaming for an extra little dis discount. Why? Because, I don't know, one thread was out of, you know, sync with the rest, whatever the case is. Then meanwhile, you know you go back to your store and then cheat the person an extra three, four, five dollars. Meanwhile, in your mind, you know this is complete hypocrisy. I demand this, this is wrong, you're being a terrible seller and so on and so forth and you should do justice to your customers and then you go and cheat somebody. So back to back goes to show they don't care at all about the 
uh, uh, um, hypocrisy. Nowadays, this kind of dishonesty is done in the marketplace, unfortunately, due to uh, different companies having al ihtikar right, monopolies. They have a monopoly, so they do what? They inflate prices and they do price gouging. Unfortunately, this happens all the time. And uh, of course, uh, uh, another one is man uh, manufactured obsolescence. Anybody know what manufactured obsolescence is? So let's say, for example, if uh, they buy, if you, you know, you buy a phone. Why is it that phones seem to break down the same, <laughs> near, near the same time? They could design it in such a way where it doesn't break down. They could design it in such a way where if it broke down, you could go inside of it, open it up, and then change the one part that's, uh, uh, that's busted, right? But they design it in such a way that you can't exchange pieces and parts, you can't open it up, and that it's designed to break down after a certain amount of time, usually right around the time that the next one is going to be dropped, right? This is called manufactured obsolescence. It's designed to break down and fall apart at a certain time. And uh, I mean, this is subhanAllah, this is the opposite of ihsan. Ihsan is to do your best, but obviously if somebody is looking to make a buck, they're going to design it to break down after a certain amount of time. Yes, tatfif, we have to remember, can be done by the employee who expects full payment but cuts the corners at work, or, or the employer who skims from his employees but expects them to work very hard. It could be done by the teacher who wants their students to study hard and get straight A's, yet hardly puts in any work to teach, and he never really prepares their lessons. It could also be by the friend who wants to have uh, loyalty and helpful uh, loyal and helpful friends, but he himself isn't a good influence and nor is he dependable. This could be from the parent who gives little, little attention to their children and yet expects the kid to be an angel, which is not very realistic. So subhanAllah, there are many different examples of tatfif, of people skimming or shortchanging people. This is such a prevalent issue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the story of Shu'ayb salam how many times in the Quran? How many times is the story of Shu'ayb salam told? Four times. Four times in Surah A'raf, uh, once in Surah uh, uh, Hud, once in Surah Shu'ara, and once in Surah An-Kabut. Uh, four times you find that the story of Shu'ayb is described. And obviously we know that Shu'ayb his people were scam artists, right? That's, that's what they were doing, and Allah Ta'ala uh, Ta sent him to warn them uh, that, look, you guys are going to get destroyed. And of course they were destroyed. Um, yes, it's also interesting that um, they were destroyed the same way uh, Thamud, uh, excuse me, yeah, Thamud, the people of Salih salam, were destroyed. Allah Ta'ala even says that they were destroyed in the same way. Uh, does anybody know what, what is the connection between those two people? Thamud and the people of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Shu'ayb salam. What's the connection between those two groups? Just an interesting factor. Small observation, but I just think it's interesting that uh, 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 the way uh, Shu'ayb salam and his people, what, the way they earned their money, was corrupt because they would skim and scam people and they would shortchange people. That's so the way they earned money was coming in, they would shortchange. And the way, and with the people of Thamud, their major sin was what? Their israf, they were wasteful in spending. So both of them had to do with money. Money in, money out. One of them was dirty the way the money was going in, the other one was dirty the way the money was going out, and Allah Ta'ala punished them the same way, which is really fascinating. Uh, uh, anyway, I just thought that was a fascinating little side point. Uh, this is mentioned in uh, uh, so the contrast of it is in Surah Hud quite clearly. Uh, uh, one day we'll talk about that in detail, inshallah ta'ala. So yeah, doing a monetary tatfif affects one's general attitude. We should remember this, that always being overly critical, always looking, is somebody trying to scam me? Because you know, you have a guilty conscience. You know you would cheat others, so you're wondering if others are cheating you. And also, you're always seeking extra credit and extra praise for doing the absolute bare minimum, which is a very ugly quality to have. People like this, you know, they might get what they want in the short term, but in the long term, you'll find that people just are repulsed by them. And so we always have to remember that you can go above and beyond the call of duty, which is to give al-fadl, or you could just do exactly what you're supposed to do, which is what? Al-adl. Uh, or you could, uh, in, uh, you can do less than what you're supposed to do, and that is called tatfif. Yes. Then Allah Ta'ala says, Allah, uh, uh, Allah annahum Do they not think that they will be resurrected? It's interesting that Allah Ta'ala says the words, ulaika. Ala yazunu ulaika. Ulaika is a uh, ism ishara, which is a you know like a, a these, those, right, uh, uh, him, her, or that, that, right. These type of words are called ism ishara. But haula means these people, right, which indicates what people that are close. Those people implies what? Some, somebody that is far. Allah Ta'ala spe spe specifically uses what? Those people who are far. Don't those far away people know? And why does Allah Ta'ala use this term? To show that they are distant from Allah's mercy and also to foreshadow what? The fact that Allah Ta'ala is going to say that they are mahjubun. Right? That they are people who are, they are going to be screened from Allah Ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. We're going to get to that in ayah number 15. And the fact that Allah Ta'ala used the word yadhunnu, dhun means suspicion, right? So this implies that they don't even have the slightest consideration that perhaps they'll be held accountable. See, the fact of the matter is, if you have even dhun, even if you have some suspicion that you could be resurrected, 
and that you might, be, you might be held accountable for your bad behavior. That should be enough to stop you. Why? Think about it. If someone's going to go in and steal something, right, from a, from a store, and then they have suspicion that there is a security camera, do you think they're going to steal? No. They're going to say, I don't know that this is a security camera, but there's something up there. It might be a security camera, and that suspicion is enough for me to say, hey, I'm going to play it safe, right? So the fact that Allah Ta'ala is saying, what? Do they not think, do they not even consider the possibility that they will be resurrected and they're going to be held accountable for what they're doing? So is this not even in your consideration? That it's not even, like, did you, did you even give it any thought whatsoever? SubhanAllah. So uh, uh, this goes to show what? That these people are really far away from even considering the reality that maybe I'm here for a test, maybe Allah is my creator, maybe I'll be resurrected. And SubhanAllah, if this is the case when it comes to the disbeliever, then you have to ask yourself, when it comes to the mu'min, to the believer, who says he has yaqeen and certainty that he is going to be resurrected, should he be anywhere near tatfif? Absolutely not. How sad is it that the Muslim world, the, 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 the world, the groups of people that are calling themselves Muslims, that we have certainty, we are convinced, we believe that Allah Ta'ala will bring us back. Why is it so the case that SubhanAllah, these people you find tatfif is... Uh, uh, prevalent amongst them. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. And then Allah says, Liyoman Azim, for a tremendous day. Don't they know that, uh, yeah, that they will be, Maba'uthun, that they'll be resurrected? Liyoman Azim, for a tremendous, for a huge, for a grand day. So Allah Ta'ala calls this day Azim, great. Why? In different places. Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu tapu rabbakum, inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un Azim, O mankind. Fear your Lord. Indeed, the convulsions of the final hour is, are going to be a terrible thing. So, how is this day great? This is the final ayah that I'll end with, inshallah ta'ala. How is this day great? Well, in terms of its length, Allah Ta'ala says, Ta'arujul malaikatu wa ruhu ilayhi, fi yawmin kana miqdaruhu khamsina al fasana. That the angels and the ruh, the spirit, will ascend to him, to Allah Ta'ala, during a day the extent of which is 50,000 years. So why is it a great day? Because it's so long. In terms of fear, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْآزِفَةِ إِذِ الْقُلُوبُ لَدَى الْحَنَاجِرِ كَالْظِمِينَ That warned them, O Muhammad Sallallahu of a day that is approaching when the hearts will, are at the throats. I'm sure we've all felt that feeling when you're so nervous, you feel like your heartbeat is pumping, you can't even swallow properly because you feel the, the, the pressure in your throat because you're so nervous about something. Allah Ta'ala is saying, it won't go down. You'll feel like your heart is in your throat and you can't get it to go down. So uh, this is a, a day that is great in terms of what? In terms of its length. It is great in terms of how much fear, how much justice there will be. It'll be a great day in terms of justice an Adam's weight of good and an Adam's weight of evil. You're going to see it. And in terms of all the events that will happen, the sun will be of such close proximity uh, to the people on Yom Al-Qiyamah. The book of deeds will be given. The, uh, the deeds will be weighed. Crossing over the bridge of Sirat and drinking from al kawthar These are all things that people will uh, uh, be experiencing on that day. And so, yes, it is indeed a great day. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll continue next week with the more descriptions about that day, yawma yaqubu nasu li rabbil alameen, about standing before our Lord and Allah ta'ala's descriptions about them. These next, this next section is kind of rough. So <laughs> just buckle in for the next week, uh, maybe, I think just week, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go over these difficult ayat, but then inshallah, I mean, I shouldn't say difficult, in the sense that they are, you know, warnings. Uh, uh, and they're, you know, quite... Um, it's, sad. It's, it's a downer, you know, you go home and you feel like, man, that's really scary stuff, you know. I don't, it makes you kind of sad, but the, the good thing is, alhamdulillah, you always find that there is uh, this, this, this balancing act, of uh, bishara and nadara, that Allah Ta'ala always balances between hope and fear, al-khawf wa raja So inshallah Ta'ala, after that we will be able to go to the ayat that talk about the believers. May Allah Ta'ala make us from amongst them, may Allah Ta'ala make us of those who fear His punishment. punishment. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who never do tatfif and cheat people and steal from people and shortchange people or skim or scam others. May Allah Ta'ala to make us of those who are honest. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.